Jimmy Stewart quietly had himself a year. So while everyone's been talking about the downfall of Stuart Haas Racing's Cup Series team, and it's not really that understated, they have been actually really abysmal in 2023. The team went winless for the first time in the history of Stuart Haas Racing in the Cup Series. Not great. They just lost their star driver in Kevin Harvick, who's going to retire, and they're replacing him with Josh Berry, who does have a high ceiling, and Eric Almirola just left and took $20 million in sponsorship with him, and they're going to replace him with Noah Gragson, and we saw what he could do. I'm very concerned for the Chicago Street Course in 2023, but, or 2024 rather, because that's when we'll be back there. Regardless, Tony Stewart, quietly though, had himself quite the year. Sure, his Cup Series team wasn't good, and he's aware of that. But two weeks ago, he went to Phoenix and watched his driver, Cole Custer, go out there and win an Xfinity Series championship. His first, and Tony Stewart's first championship uh, to celebrate in quite some time. So for Cole and for Tony, it was awesome. You saw the emotion of Tony Stewart on the box, fist pumping, absolutely bear hugging guys. He was super excited to see that, and why wouldn't you be? As a team owner, his cars in the Cup Series have struggled this year. The bright spot has been Cole Custer with his three Xfinity wins and Riley Herbst's one win at Las Vegas. Finally broke through for that in an absolutely dominating fashion. But Tony Stewart, just with that, I mean, that's a pretty good year for a car owner. There's tons of car owners that wish they could just be in position to win a Xfinity Series championship. Well, Tony Stewart this past weekend goes out to the NHRA Finals and watches both of his cars compete for a championship. Obviously, he bought both... Technically, I don't necessarily know what the transaction was per se, but Don Schumacher racing with Matt Hagen and Leah Pruitt, it just kind of became Tony Stewart racing and Dodge and that direct connection Mopar sponsorship went over to Tony Stewart racing, now based out of Brownsburg, Indiana, and they made themselves an NHRA team. And Tony Stewart uh, is funding that without Gene Haas behind him, or at least operating it. And Matt Hagen goes out there and wins a championship in NHRA. Funny car for Tony Stewart, the company's first championship in NHRA, and only their second year of existence, which honestly, when you think about it, is really impressive. His wife, Leah Pruitt, also goes out there and gets to contend for a championship in top fuel. She ends up finishing third in the season standings. Uh, Doug Coletta finally goes out there and wins the title in top fuel. Connie can be super happy. Obviously, if you follow NHRA, you know the long history of the Kalitas in NHRA and what that championship right there meant for them. But having both of his cars be in contention, though, is massive. Tony Stewart's having himself a year. He's got two championships to celebrate now, and Matt Hagen goes out there and wins it in his Dodge Charger Hellcat Redline Last Call Edition Funny Car Nitro, whatever the long name of it is. Really cool to see that. Hagen seems like a pretty cool guy. Absolutely built like a tank, though. And if you were going to design a physical specimen to send in and scare the crap out of anybody that you were fighting in a war, Matt Hagen might be the guy. Might not be the tallest guy out there, but like I said, dude's built like a tank. He makes Ryan Newman look tiny, and that's pretty hard to do. Leah Pruitt goes out there and finishes third in the championship, which, again, is really impressive for them. Again, and only their second season as an NHRA full-time team. Wildly impressive. So good for Tony Stewart. And people are like, oh, you know, he doesn't care anymore. He just wants to spend time with his wife. He's more interested in drag racing. Well, he's got championships in both series. Obviously, Donnie Schatz did not get the championship in Sprint Guards this year in the World of Outlaws. That went to Brad Sweet. Schatz, though, maybe he'll be on his way back. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that program once Donnie Schatz retires, um, if he retires. And we'll see what happens next year. I assume that they'll be racing World of Outlaws in 2024. They could make the jump to the uh, High Limit Series, which would be an interesting move, but a more lucrative one when you think about it from a money standpoint. So for Tony Stewart, while his Cup Series program has absolutely been abysmal, like I said this year, everything else actually isn't that bad for him. As much as people want to talk about how how he, in the, the downfall of the Tony Stewart Motorsport, you know, asset enterprise is, Things really aren't that bad. And now he's going into their final year with Ford on the Cup side, or on the NASCAR side, rather, because Xfinity's included in that. And we'll see what happens in 2025. Do they re-up with Ford and continue on? Obviously, Ford is getting that new Mustang dark horse body in 24. We'll see how well that performs. Or will they jump ship and go to another manufacturer? That more than likely being Chevy if they were to do that. Obviously, Stuart Haas Racing had their most success when they were in Chevrolets, partnering up with you know, Hendrick Motorsports and everything like that. Obviously, things are different now from the Gen 6 car to the Gen 7 car. 
And then you also have the topic of will they continue on with four charters and four cars and everything that goes along uh, with that conversation, which we've talked about that before. But when you look at 2023 as a whole, Tony Stewart, granted, he wanted to get Kevin Harvick that last win in his final season. And you know Harvick wanted it. You know Rodney Childers wanted it. They almost got it at Phoenix. They almost had it at the Southern 500 if it wouldn't have been for just a bonehead move by Tyler Reddick there that brings out the caution. Maybe he gets it done at the Southern 500. Obviously, when you look at what happened at Phoenix, again, caution bites him and takes him out of contention there. Um, eventually, you thought Harvick was going to win one. And I think Tony Stewart will always be pretty upset that they weren't able to do that. But also at the same time, losing Eric Onrola, he's pretty upset about that as well because there's a ton of money that comes along with that sponsorship that Eric brought. Outside of what his Cup Series teams have done, though, what they've been able to do in NHRA with their factory back Dodge program is really impressive. And we'll see if they can continue on next year. If they want a championship in year two, imagine what they're going to do in year three. I mean, maybe they'll win a championship with both cars. Maybe they'll expand to a three-car team at some point. Not really sure what the future is there. Obviously, as long as his wife wants to keep doing it, Tony will keep doing it. He's obviously forged a decent relationship on that side with Dodge. And his wife has a great relationship with Dodge. So does Matt Hagen. It would be interesting to see how that expands overall in the Tony Stewart umbrella of companies, since they do have a good relationship with Ford as well on the NASCAR side, or at least did. They still act like they do, but I feel like that relationship might be a little bit colder than they're, than they're leading on. Like a nice divorce couple that puts on that smiley face at family functions, but as soon as they get home, they both go to separate rooms and don't talk to each other. So yeah, Tony Stewart being able to win two different championships in two very different series, very impressive. We'll see what they can do in 2024. Hopefully their cup program turns itself around. That way we don't have to continue here about the downfall of Stuart Haas Racing and how it's so much like Roush and all of the, the absolutely meteoric plummet back down to earth that Roush had in the late, well, no, probably like the, uh, the late 2000s into the early aughts. No, not aughts, tens. I was never big with the, uh, the number dates. Ots, tens, doesn't matter. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Break Hardblog. Like and subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you all later.